go to tumblr.com. Then it brings me into here, click on my avatar. Click on my avatar again. It brings me to this page. I'm looking for this little gearbox thing for settings. So I click on that and then I'm after edit the theme. So click on edit the theme. It brings you to here. Then what I want to do is scroll down to the bottom of the page and I'm gonna add a page. We're not using standard layout, we're using custom layout because we're gonna write the HTML. First thing I'm gonna do is give it a URL. I'm gonna call it pythag21 and show a link to this page. And the page title is Pythagorean Calculator 2021. Down here, I'm gonna type in my HTML. In the HTML, I want to have three input boxes. Input, type, is equal to text that I put in quotes. And I'm gonna give each one an ID. I'm gonna make the ID of the first one A. So it's gonna be my A side of the triangle. Slash, uh, close that bracket, it's a greater than symbol. I'm gonna make three of these. So I'm just gonna copy that three times and change the ID to B and the ID to C. I'm gonna make a button called Calculate. The ID is gonna be Calc on click equals when you click the button, this is what it's gonna do in quotes. I'm gonna tell it to go to a JavaScript function, which we're gonna write called calculate. Open bracket, close bracket. Then I can close the triangular bracket and then I'm just gonna write the word cheese. If I press update preview and then save, notice we see the button and it, it has the word cheese on it, which you probably don't want. You probably want it to say something like calculate. I want to have a picture of a triangle, okay? So this is what we were doing last class. We were in sketchbook and I drew a picture of a triangle. Then I'm just gonna take a screenshot of that. Shift, control, command, four on a Mac. On an iPad, you would have to do a screenshot and then edit the screenshot. I have to go to my preview app, press new, there it is. And then I'm gonna save that. Command S as uh, try. I'm going back into my Tumblr. I'm gonna to go to my original Tumblr page, tumblr.com. Then I'm gonna tell it that I wanted to add a new post. I'm just gonna click photo. I'm gonna upload that as a photo. I'm going to upload from my desktop. There it is, try.png. And uh, there. And so then I'm just gonna click post. Now it's been posted to into the Tumblr. The reason I'm doing this is so I can then get access to the address of it. So if I right click on this image, I can copy the image address. I'm gonna go back into my code here. I wanna put an image in, so IMG, that's an image tag. I'm gonna put the source SRC is equal to, in quotes, this image tag. It's really long, Read slash, close all that update the preview, then you would see the triangle. The other thing I want to do is move those text boxes so that they are on the A spot, B spot, and C spot of the triangle. I'm going to use something called CSS to do that. I'm going to put a style tag. Type is equal to, in quotes, text slash CSS. I want to move my A. It's here. I want to move my B, so it's here and the C here. I'm going to make these things called divs. A div is a division of the screen. I'm going to make a div like this div id is equal to triangle div i'm going to put this after all my inputs then i'm going to make a div for my a input box i'm going to call this a div and then i'm going to put the close of that after my a like that i'm just going to indent that indent that i'm going to do the same thing for my b and c it's going to be faster just to copy this change this to this one to b this to b change this one to c div and this to c there we go then in my CSS, I'm going to move my a div. I'm going to put a hashtag a div, open brackets, close brackets, and I'm going to write position is absolute. That tells me that I can move stuff around to wherever I say. Say that the top is, I'm going to make it 100 pixels. From the left of the screen, I'm going to make that 100 pixels. Let's update the preview and save. You see that my A moved to here. This is where the A is. That's not where I want it. I want it over here. I'm going to move it over, let's say, to 300 pixels from the left. 300, update the preview. No, still not far enough. Let's try 500 pixels to update the preview. That's not bad. I'm just going to move it down to, like, let's say, 200 pixels down. No, nope, that's too far. So let's go to 150 and update the preview. There we go. So there's my A side of the triangle. Okay, so I'm going to move the B 
by doing exactly the same thing. I copied and pasted the A and then renamed it BDiv. 500 is way too far and I want the BDiv to be right here. I'm going to change this to, let's go back to 200 and let's bring this down to about 300 pixels. Update the preview. My B is here. I want it just a little bit higher. So let's go to 280, update the preview. That's fine. And then the C I want it over here. So I want the C to be very similar to the B, just not as low down the screen. Copy and paste. The top is instead of 280. Let's try 80. Update the preview. Whoa, I have two B divs instead of a C div. Update the preview. There we are. I don't want it cutting through the triangle, so I'm just going to move it a little bit more left. Maybe give it a smaller left value. Instead of 200, I'm going to make it 180. Update the preview. Still not far enough. Let's try 170. Update the preview. Really? Maybe this one's a bit low still. On my C, I'm going to make that instead of 280. I'm going to make it uh, 250. I'm trying to move to the A div, and I was moving the B div. Let's go to the A div. Instead of 150 down, I'm going to do 120. Update the preview. There we go. Okay. Now I have the A, B, and C where I want them. Let's say this was, my A was 3 and my B was 4. When I press calculate, I want it to say that the C is 5, and I want it to write it inside this box. We have a calculate button, so I'm going to make a calculate function inside JavaScript. I'm going to make a JavaScript up here, just underneath the HTML. I'm going to put in a, a script tag, script type is equal to text slash JavaScript, like that, close that, and then I can put any code I want in here. So I'm going to make a function called calculate. I copied the calculate word from down here so that it was identical. I want to get my A, B, and C values. I'm going to make a var variable, I'm going to call that capital A, is equal to document dot get element by ID. From your web page, you're trying to get something based on its ID. The ID of the A text box is A. And we want the value of it, so dot value. And I want it to make sure it's a number, so I'm gonna multiply it by one. Then I'm gonna get a B and a C. A, B, and C. A, B, and C. I should also put a little console log here just to see if it's working. Console log, we are in calculate. That'll just tell me it's working. And then I'm going to make a little console log to say, hey, this is what my A is, this is what my B is, this is what my C is. Copy the console log from up here. I'm going to write A, a space, close quotations, plus the value of A. It's going to write the text A, and then it's going to write the value of A. I'm going to repeat that for B and C. Let's test that out. Update the preview. I want to show the console log. I need to be able to see that. There's a shortcut. It's option command J on the, on the computer. If I go to view under menus, and I'm looking for developer, and then I want to see the JavaScript console, and this will appear. If I enter three in the A spot, four in the B spot, and five in the C spot, and press calculate, what we should see is we are in calculate, A is three, B is four, C is five. It's not doing what we want it to do yet, but it is working. But when we click calculate, that function is called, and it actually finds the values from the web page. What we want it to do is calculate, if you give it A and B, it should calculate C. If you give it A and C, it should calculate B. If you give it C and B, it should calculate A. It's looking for two sides. Do I know A and B? If A is greater than zero and B is greater than zero, let me just see what happens if I enter three, four, but nothing for the C and I press calculate. It says C is zero. If you leave it empty, it gives it a value of zero. If A is greater than zero, B is greater than zero, and C is equal to zero, then I can find the C value. A, B, and C. C is equal to zero. If that's true, calculate C. My C is going to be equal to A squared, A times A, plus B squared, B times B, and then the square root of that. To get the square root, we call a function called math dot sqrt, sqrt for square root. Then we need to put that into this box. We can use the same code that we used to take it from this box. The C's value is now going to be equal to C. I'm going to put a little else here, and then we're going to test for what happens if A is greater than zero, C is greater than zero, and B is equal to zero. It's going to be C squared take away A squared. It's B is equal to. And then we want the B value to be our B value. Else, if A is equal to zero, and B is greater than zero and C is greater than zero. A is C squared minus B squared. 
then our a is going to take the value of our variable a. Update preview, save that. If I put 3 here, and 4 here, press calculate, it should write 5 up there. And it did. If I put 5 up there and 4 here and press calculate, it totally works. If I put 5, 4, get rid of the A, press calculate, it works. And just to show you that it works from the math programs, the Pythagorean theorem. Here we're missing the hypotenuse, I believe. Let's rotate the shape. Yeah, it's the hypotenuse we're missing. 64, 252, 64, 252. And then I remove the 5 and press calculate, 260. Okay? Okay, so that totally works. Um, and that's how you do the program.